Benzinka here, and this is the third episode of OOT Speedruns 101, Kakariko Village. To start off, we're going to do another boring collection sequence, but it is an important one because the bottle is one of the most broken items in the game. The only thing we really need to know about the cuckoos is that when they run away from you after you throw them or drop them, they'll take the best direction to try and get away from you. We can abuse this by changing our position to force them into certain spots. However, once they're done running away from you, it's just a random number generator that determines where they'll walk to. But they'll stay in the same general area. really bad at hurting these cuckoos. Once we have our bottle, we can get some bugs from underneath this rock. Now we're ready to go into the bottom of the well, but first I'm going to reset the cuckoos. There are two ways to get into the bottom of the well without the Song of Storms. The first method is to use a navi dive like the aqua escape we did earlier in episode 1. The second way is to get ISG and pick up a cuckoo to do a cutscene dive. This works the same as a navi dive. We need to get ISG off of the cuckoo or a sign. To get ISG off the cuckoo, drop it with your shield, quick draw, face away from the cuckoo, when you're crouch stabbing so that you don't hit it and then pick up the cuckoo. Once you have ISG and the cuckoo, you can walk over to the well. Z target one of the walls and turn around. Here, we need to backflip and shield drop the cuckoo at the same time. Because the cutscene is playing, Link doesn't register that he's in the water so you sink to the bottom. Then we just swim over to the loading zone. The other way to get into the bottom of the well without the Song of Storms is to use a navi dive. The main reason to get into the bottom of the well early is because there's a chest with bomb tubes that we can obtain. Bomb tubes are extremely useful and can be used for things such as early shadow temple, the spirit hover, 
or just hovering in general. One thing you might need to know is that in this pot there is always a Deku stick the first time you enter. Because we don't have Zelda's lullaby, we can't lower the water in this room. So we need another way down into Dead Hand's room. What we need to do is perform an actor glitch using this crawl space and the door behind it. First, I'll demonstrate how to do it, and then I'll walk you through it. Bonk. So what just happened is that when we tried to walk through the door, the little cutscene that plays that locks the camera from the crawl space kept us in this room. We can hear the keys in the other room, which aren't normally meant to be loaded when you're in here. All of the actors in this room are unloaded, and a side effect is that the water does not load and we can jump in. To do the actor glitch, we have to enter the crawl space from this side, as it doesn't work backing out. While the camera is locked, when Link exits the crawl space, we need to hold in between down and down left on our control stick. As soon as Link turns, we need to do a forward roll, then hold full left and mash A so that Link opens the door before the camera lock ends. If you mess up and enter the room, it's no big deal, as the door does not have to be locked. Simply exit the room, crawl through again, and start over. Once we've got the actor glitch, you crawl back through this hole and head back towards the entrance. Normally you would need Zelda's lullaby to lower this water, but with the actor glitch the water isn't loaded properly. So we can go through this crawl space straight to Dead Hand. Jump slashing at one of Dead Hand's arms causes you to recoil off of it and not get caught. I'm not very good at timing that jump slash, but I've heard it's something like five wiggles very specific. Once you've defeated Dead Hand, in the back of the room there is an invisible chest that contains 200 rupees. This can be used to buy the Hylian shield in the Hyrule Market before we do the Temple of, or the Door of Time skip. If you need it, the Lens of Truth is in this chest. The entire reason we needed to defeat Dead Hand is so that we can go back through this door and reload the actors in the next room. The main actor that we need to have reloaded is this Skulltula. It is important because as young Link, when you are falling and you grab onto a climbable wall such as a vine or a wall like this, 
Link's arms go through the wall just a little bit. If you get hit during this time, Link will clip through the wall. Because this is a frame perfect trick, we need to get ourselves positioned correctly and have good timing. Back walk off the ledge and climb back up. Turn 90 degrees to the left and slash the wall once. Then turn 90 degrees to the left again to set ourselves up like this. When the skull tool is at its highest point, we want to do a neutral B, then hold down and then Z so that Link turns around and back walks off the ledge. Once Link's left hand is below his right, we need to start pause buffering to get the correct frames. Once you see two skinny legs near your C-right button, you know you've got the trick ready to do. We need to advance two frames here. We'll see two skinny legs, and then we should see one big leg. Next to our C down button. We can also see a leg near our A button. We need to advance one more frame. Now that we've got to the right frame, we need to pause buffer down and A so that Link lets go of the vine. Then we pause buffer down for one more frame. Now we hold up and Link will clip through the vine as it gets hit by the Skulltula. Once you get hit, you want to hold down left once, so that when you hit the water you can hit Z and have the correct angle so you don't fall out. Then line yourself up with the water above and mash B to quick swim and jump slash into the bomb chew room. I'll show you that trick a couple more times. The timing of your slash is very important. I like to try and time pressing B with the sound of the Skulltula reaching its height. We just saw two skinny legs, and then this is the big leg next to our C down button. So the next frame is when I need to pause buffer down A. Hold down left, Z target, and swim over to the bomb shoes. Mash B to swim fast. You can jump slash to try and ensure that you make it into the room. Sometimes you'll see two skinny legs like this, but they're very long and extend down almost to the middle of your screen. When you see that, you can advance a few more frames until you see nothing. On the next frame, you should see two skinny legs again. I ended up skipping the skinny legs again, but here's the big leg next to our C down, and the little tiny leg near our A button. On the next frame, we need to pause buffer down an A. Hopefully I don't miss that one. Down A. I advance two frames while holding down, so this frame I just need to hold up to clip through. Down left, Z target, quick swim with B.
Now that we've got the bomb to use, the quickest way out is usually just to save and quit. But for completion's sake, I'm going to show you where to get the compass, the map, and the skull tulas in the bottom of the well. For the skull tulas, we need to get all three keys in the bottom of the well, one of which can be found in this hidden wall. To get the compass, there's another hidden wall. There's a pit in front of us that we can side hop over. But for now, I'm just going to fall in. Because this is where we get the map. You need some explosives to get the map. Fortunately, I've got bomb shoes. All of the Skulltulas require the boomerang to get, or bomb hovering. So to just demonstrate how to get them, I'm going to make a save here, and then give myself the boomerang. By having the boomerang, we can easily get all the Skulltulas in the bottom of the well, as well as getting a key a little bit easier and quicker than without. If we have the boomerang, in this room we can get the small key a little bit easier than if we did. We need to walk up to this tomb and then throw our boomerang. If you have the correct position and angle, it'll go through the tomb that has the key and catch it. Usually near the end of this tombstone, and then facing a little bit left. While the boomerang is flying, back walk. Honestly, I just got lucky with that key, and I have not practiced this trick at all. But now that we've got the rest of the keys, we can go get the skull tools. Each of the skull tools that I get with the boomerang can also be gotten by bomb hovering up the wall, like I showed you in the Deku Tree. Although, this is very impractical. The floor on the right side of this room is solid. You can see this with the lens of truth, but I don't have magic. The last skull Tula is in here. Although it looks like you might be able to use the like click to force yourself through this gate, 
He'll always spit you out on this same side. Plus, you lose your shield. Although, you can easily get that back in the next room. To get to the Skulltula, we go through the door that we used for the actor glitch before. But we don't want to do the actor glitch. Along the left side of this wall is safe, and we can get a new Deku Shield if we need to. Then we need to walk towards the Beamos, and then towards the door. And this chest is a Hylian Shield. If we have some explosives or something else to kill the Gold Skull Tula, we can actually use the Like Like to throw us into the token. But the other two Skull Tulas still require the Boomerang or Bomb Hovering. So there's really no reason to do that. There are only three Skull Tulas in the bottom of the well. So that's all I have to show you. I haven't decided yet where I want to go with the next episode, but it'll probably be either Jabu Jabu's Belly or Early Hover Boots as Child and Adult Link. But for now, I'll just leave off in Kakariko Village. Ha! <laughs>